Four common issues found on XML sitemaps and how to fix them. With Catherine Nwana Ray. The In Search SEO podcast is brought to you by Rank Ranger, the all in one SEO platform that helps skill your business through data and analytics. Hey, it's David. What are the common issues found in XML sitemaps? What impact do they have and how do you fix them? That's what we're going to be discussing today with a lady who, when she's not working on projects or writing about SEO, spends her time growing tomatoes, peppers and herbs. She was recently mentored by Aleda Solis in the Freelance Coalition for Developing Countries Tech SEO Mentorship and is a freelance contractor and founder of Tech SEO Journal. A warm welcome to the In Search SEO podcast, Catherine Wannery. Hi, David. Thanks for having me. Hey, Catherine, great to have you here. Well, you can find Catherine over at techseojournal.com. So, Catherine, why are XML sitemaps so important? Okay, that's a good question. Um, for me, there are two main benefits to having an XML sitemap. So, for one, it helps search engines to find your important pages. So, if you're, if you're dealing with a smaller website that has 500 pages or fewer good internal linking structure and pages that don't change frequently, then having an XML sitemap is not a priority in this case. But if you're dealing with a larger website where you have content that changes frequently, poor internal linking structures and often pages, then having a sitemap makes sense in this case because it can help search engines to find your important pages. But I'd also like to mention that having an XML sitemap doesn't guarantee indexing, right? So it's more like a hint, a clue to search engines like, hey, I have these really cool pages that I think should be indexed. Could you mind taking a look at it? Yeah, that's how it works. Then the second benefit to having an XML sitemap is it helps in troubleshooting SEO issues, particularly indexing issues. But I'll come back to this when I'm addressing the common XML sitemap issues and how to fix them. Great. Okay. Now you said um, for larger sites. So do you have a certain number of pages in mind where if a site is over a certain number of pages, then it's a good idea to use an XML sitemap? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Google documentation recommends 500 pages and above, like the opposite of a smaller website. But in most cases, a thousand pages or more could be fine. Great. Okay. It's great to have uh, definitive um, numbers to focus on there. So today you're sharing the four common issues with XML sitemaps. So starting off with number one, listing ineligible URLs. Okay. So by ineligible URLs, I mean URLs that generate a 404 error code. Maybe they're blocked by robust TST or they have a no index tag or they are redirected. And this usually comes up in the case where you likely created a sitemap manually and somehow this error pages made it into the file. And another reason why this comes up is because maybe you created an XML sitemap that doesn't update automatically, like it's static. So when you make pages on your website, it doesn't reflect on the sitemap. And this is a problem because instead of crawling your valid pages, search engines are wasting time trying to assess your heavily redirected content or pages they shouldn't be getting into. And Google has mentioned that if they carry the sitemap after several attempts, they will eventually stop trying to. And this defeats the purpose of having an XML sitemap in the first place. Yes. Got you. Okay. So basically, if you keep ineligible URLs incorporated in your XML sitemap, then eventually Google are just going to ignore your XML sitemap or perhaps even not even trust your whole whole website as yes. being as authoritative yes. as well. That is correct. Yes. Okay, well, that takes us up to number two, which is um, an XML sitemap that generates an unsupported HTML format error. Okay, so first I'd like to um, describe what an, an HTML sitemap is all about. Um, an HTML sitemap, is it contains links to your pages and sections on your website and is usually meant for human users to navigate your site. It is located at the footer section of your website and... Yes, in, in most cases, search engines can also follow these links to find your pages. But that's where a similarity ends with an XML sitemap. An HTML sitemap does not have, it does not have a last modification date. If you have videos, you might probably not even be able to link those videos to the HTML sitemap. So if you, if you really want to tell search engines about your existing and updated content, then you should stick to an XML sitemap. 
But in a case where you're trying to submit your XML sitemap and you're getting this error that is a file in HTML format, then there are chances that you're actually submitting a file in HTML format or your sitemap has errors that is making it difficult to read. And another common reason why this comes up is because there's a caching functionality on your website. So a plugin or your server or a configuration is getting in the way and instead serving a file in HTML format. That's what happens in this case. Okay, great tips there as well. So are there any benefits ever to have an HTML sitemap and an XML sitemap at the same time? Or will an XML sitemap by itself suffice? Yeah, there, there are benefits to having both. Like, is if you can get additional value in something, why not? So, yeah, if your pages are, you have, let's say, a really great crawl depth, like some pages are very difficult to reach, and maybe users are not getting to pages they should be getting into, then a file in HTML format, like a HTML and HTML sitemap, can help you um, get users to pages they should be getting into. It can help them navigate your website. While on the other hand, an XML sitemap is meant for search engines. So in this case, you're considering to both the users and the crawlers. So yes, it's definitely a good idea to have both. Okay, and you obviously talked about the importance of um, coding an XML sitemap correctly. Um, is there anywhere that you recommend checking to see that your XML sitemaps are coded correctly? Oh, yeah, sure. So if um, you, you, you're you worried that your XML sitemap might be um, an HTML file, you a quick way to really check is try submitting it on Google Search Console. So you likely get a response that, oh, is an HTML sitemap and when that happens how to how to find out what's really causing this is open up the XML sitemap on your browser and inspect the page with Chrome DevTools. So if there is a plugin or if it's a server catching, you'd likely see a list of things that are getting in the way when you inspect the page. So once you find out there is a caching functionality, you can go ahead and change your configurations, clear your cache, and everything should go back to the way it is. But if you're not seeing any caching functionality getting in the way, then you likely have errors. And in this case, you would need to use an XML sitemap validator to check if there are errors or wrongly encoded attributes on your sitemap. Brilliant, okay. And if your XML sitemap is coded correctly, if it's proper XML, is there any danger of um, having a caching plugin um, f freezing your XML sitemap so it's not updating correctly? Or is that not a danger with an XML file? Um, is is a danger. That's why I recommend that you should make sure the caching plugin does not. There is a, there is a sentence in many plugins where you can cache your sitemaps, but you shouldn't. It could cause issues, like I mentioned, it could make the XML sitemap to come up as a HTML and HTML file. It could, it could create so many errors, so it's best not to cache your XML sitemap. Please don't. It's just better not to. And number three is not declaring a page and its alternate version correctly. Yes, yeah, so this, this applies to um, in, in a case where you're implementing your hreflang tag on your XML sitemap. And in this case, you need to specify the URL you want to be indexed and then it's alternate versions, including itself. So for example, let's say um, I have an English page, um, a page for English speakers on my website and I would like it to be indexed. So, but at the same time, I have two alternate versions. I have, let's say, a German version for um, speakers in Switzerland and a Chinese version for Chinese users. So how to do this would be, I'll specify the URL for the English page and then list these three alternate versions. That's the German version for Switzerland, the Chinese version for China, and the English version itself. So also these tags are, they are reciprocal, right? So if each referenced alternate version doesn't point back to the other, there is a problem. Your sitemaps could be, your XML sitemap could be, it could come up with issues where your hreflang tags are incorrectly interpreted or they're completely ignored. Well, that brings us up to number four, which is having one large sitemap for separate sections of a website. <laughs> okay, yes. Yeah, so um, currently Google supports 50,000 URLs in a single sitemap or a sitemap size of 50 MB on complex maximum, whichever one you hit first. This doesn't mean that if you have 50,000 URLs that you should list all of them in one page. No, this is not really a good practice because it could make it difficult for you to troubleshoot issues. Like 
you you would have no idea of sections of your website that are having indexing or crawling issues that like sections where site engines and crawlers are not really getting into so ideally you should segment your site maps by sections let's say for example you have an e-commerce website right you could create one single sitemap for your static pages, that's the About Us page, Terms and Conditions, and then different sitemaps for your category pages. This way you can easily spot issues and filter down in the indexing reports on Google Search Console, the sections of your website that are not getting crawled and indexed as they should. Is there a maximum number of sitemaps that you can have for your site? Mm, currently, um, I think that's around... No, I can't really put a number to it right now, but yeah, you can create up to, let's just say 50,000 URLs in a single site map, and then the site map yeah. should be, yeah, under an index file. I'm not really sure if there's a large number, but I know you can create up to a thousand or more, but I'm not sure that there is. I mean, that's, I a, that, right that's a significant number, certainly, yeah. as well. But I think the key is, as you've said, you know, 50,000 euros to an individual sitemap. You know, don't individual, start yes. creating sitemaps with, um, mm -hmm. with, 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 with more than that. Um, what about checking, diagnosing your XML sitemaps on a regular basis? I mean, is this something that you should be um, checking to see if there's errors in them, say, once a month? Mm, once a month is... It I wouldn't recommend once a month. I mean, if you really want to know what's going on on your website, so you should you should be checking your Google Search Console because that's where you can see these errors for sitemap. You should be checking it periodically, like daily if you can, or weekly, depending on the amount of pages you publish. Like if you publish, let's say, a content every single day, then it makes sense to be checking it, right? But if your pages really change, then yes, weekly could count, but please, you have to check it. You have to. People are listening to this, watching this, and thinking, okay, I need to understand XML sitemaps um, much more. You know, Catherine's obviously um, a plethora of information here. And uh, <laughs> are there any resources that you can actually recommend for people to find out more about XML sitemaps? Oh, yes, yes. Um, you should check the Google documentation. They have an extensive documentation on what XML sitemap is all about, how to create one, the best practices, how to manage it for multilingual sites. Like, I think to an extent, almost every information you can find is there. So yeah, you can find it there. Superb. Okay, well, let's finish off with the Pareto Pickle. So Pareto says that you can get 80% of your results from 20% of your efforts. What's one SEO activity that you would recommend that provides incredible results for modest levels of effort? <laughs> I'd say good internal linking structure. This is because it's the primary source of um, URL discovery for search engines. They can follow links within your site to get to important pages on your website. And beyond this, you can also use links to pass SEO value. You can use it to pass value to other pages as well, right? And you can also use it to indicate importance, relative importance of a page over others and relationship between your pages. So yeah, a good internal linking structure is best. So it does having a good internal linking structure not mean that XML sitemaps aren't necessary? No, no, not not really. Like I mentioned, if you have a good internal linking structure and a smaller website, it's not a priority to have an XML sitemap, right? But some sites can see much value from XML sitemap than others. Like if you have really large pages, yes, you can do, you can have a good internal linking structure, but who wouldn't want more value, right? Who wouldn't want search engines to get to their pages on time and stuff. So an XML sitemap is like a secondary, a secondary precaution you take why an internal linking structure, good internal linking structure is the primary um, step you take, yeah. Or an HTML sitemap, is an HTML sitemap necessary if you have good internal links? If users are still having issues navigating through your website, then an HTML sitemap makes sense. Understood, okay. So, um, if you're having issues with getting URLs ranked, um, or perhaps navigation, as you say, then an HTML sitemap could be good for both users and search engines. But if you have all of your pages that you want to be indexed, indexed, then it's not necessary to have an HTML sitemap. Would, would no, that be no, a reasonable if you, thing to yes. say? Yes, it's not necessary. It's a nice to have in that case, but not a must have. Well, I've been your host, David Bain. You can find Catherine over at techseojournal.com. Catherine, thanks so much for being on the In Search SEO podcast. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. And thank you for listening. Check out all the previous episodes and sign up for a free trial of the Rank Ranger platform over at rankranger.com.